thank you so much for joining thank us, you. sister. Thank, thank you. you very much. How are you? you? I'm well. I'm now, well. as soon as you walked into the room, I felt peaceful. Oh, well. Because <laughs> Buddhism often even tells us, in Buddhism, for example, it says that when you wear white, mm -hmm. it's a very peaceful color and it attracts a lot of peaceful things. Now, yogis, etc., also always wear white because it attracts peace. Am I correct? White is a symbol of purity, of si uh, simplicity, and white is a mixture of all the colors. You know, all the colors make white. And so white also, it is peaceful, yes. Like when we have doves for peace, they're white. Yes, mm. indeed. Now let's talk about your university, uh, Brahma Kumaris. It's mm. a spiritual organization led by women yes. around the world. Yes. So is it also in Nigeria as well? Yes, we have two branches in uh, Lagos. Uh, one is in Ilupeju and one is in Ikoi. Okay, so yes. tell us about it. What, what are your foundational beliefs? Because okay. in Nigeria, so, we know the most popular religions are like we have the Christian, we have Muslim, but we don't really know. Is yours a religion? No. Okay. Because you see the word university was there. So university means education. And it's an education about spiritual values. Because it's that which is, because there's a lack of values, then society, you will see, is becoming fragmented. It's breaking apart. And, you know, just on the way here, when I was coming here, I was thinking that it's actually love, which is the glue in relationships. And when there's a shortage of love, because what's happened is people see love as a commodity, give and take. You know, commodities as give yeah. and take. And so love has become a deal. You know, it's like become a bargain. You do this much, I'll do this much. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And so um, we've forgotten the heart and it, love has gone to the head. We start intellectualizing these things. Whereas actually, it is one of the core values of the soul. So what would you say are the practices that your university leverages on to ensure that <clears throat> your students get to the highest spiritual level possible? Okay. Look at the word spiritual. And... The word spiritual has the word spirit in it. In any organization, in any religion, in any culture, there is reference to the spirit. Some will say uh, third eye, some will say soul, some will say spirit, some will say atma, somebody says ruh. And so there's reference to the spirit, but nobody knows much about the spirit. And the amazing thing is, it's a spirit which makes the physical function. Without the spirit, this physical is of no use. It doesn't do anything unless the spirit is there. And so the spirit is the master. We've lost our self-mastery because we have forgotten the spirit. And so spirituality means studying the spirit. Like you study geography, you study maths, you study biology. You get to know about it. And in the same way, we study our own spirit. Wow. Okay, now for your university, you teach the studying of the spirit. Hmm. How, what kind of people are qualified to attend? Anybody. Female. Any, any male, female, rich, poor, anybody. Because we're all spirits. And we all need. Society needs positive thinking, it needs to um, <coughs> ma uh, manage your anger, not even manage anger, overcome anger. We lack in self-respect. We need uh, stress management. These are the kind of More things More importantly, in a place like Lagos, the okay. stress management. <laughs> Absolutely. But, let's but I find about... Lagos, the people, very amazing in the sense that they understand these things very quickly. They pick up these Quick things thinkers. very quickly. Yes. Yeah. But let's also speak about the concept of forgiveness. And mm. not forgiveness onto others, but forgi mm. forgiveness onto self. Mm -hmm. Because in order to forgive other people, mm. it's often mm. said that you have to know how to forgive yourself. Mm. What spiritual practices do you work on and execute in order to ensure that more people are starting to learn how to forgive themselves? <clears throat> forgiveness is very interesting. When I say, I forgive you, and... It's like almost an ego. Do I have the authority to forgive somebody? And even if I forgive them, does that make them exempt from the consequences of their actions? Do you follow me? Two things are happening. 
one, it's, all, it's ego to say I forgive you because I don't have that authority. And then even if I have forgiven them, even if I do forgive somebody, even if I forgive myself, I still have to suffer the consequences of my action. Okay. Now, so what your, we know your organization, one of the major tenets that your organization is founded on is on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Here in Nigeria, there's mm -hmm. so much anger and bitterness at the government because mm -hmm. the government has made a lot of promises mm -hmm. and that they have not fulfilled. So we find a lot of people that are angry at the government, mm -hmm. you know, and they want to change, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. How do you teach people to deal with you know, forgiveness of the government or deal with the emotion. There's so much anger and resentment going on. And at the end of the day, we find that it leads into some sort of depression because people feel so, so you know, hopeless. Hopeless. Hopeless is the hopeless. word. Hopeless. Not only hopeless, helpless. Mm. In many situations, you'll see people feel helpless to bring about change. And this situation that you're describing, that people are angry towards the government, it's not exclusive to Nigeria. It's a worldwide thing. It's an international thing. You'll see it in other countries also. And it's very easy to blame. It's very easy to escape from our own responsibility and blame an organization, blame a society, blame uh, members of the public. Anger, you mentioned anger. Before we feel angry, that one second before the anger, there's another feeling. And that feeling is hurt. It's when I'm hurt, there's anger. Anger doesn't come unless there's hurt. Think about it really deeply. Somebody lies to you, you feel hurt, then you lash out in anger. You retaliate. So anger needs to be studied. So why do I get angry? Why am I blaming somebody else? for promises that they're not keeping. Do they have the capacity to keep those promises? Because when I'm empty, no matter how many promises I make, I will never be able to fulfill those promises. And so spirituality, the law of spirituality is, one law is, when I change, the world changes. Another law is that if I'm empty, I cannot give. And if I am, if I don't, another law which you're very familiar with, and it's in the Bible also, as you sow, so shall you reap. So what am I sowing? A farmer sows seeds. Where are my seeds? Where are the seeds that I'm going to sow? We all have those seeds. Our each and every thought is equivalent to a seed. And I am sowing those seeds in the earth of my mind. Whatever I am sowing, I'm going to get the results of that. I'm going to get the fruit of that. And so when we pay attention to our thoughts, our thoughts are an asset. Our thoughts are powerful. Our thoughts are nonstop. Our thoughts are magnetic. When I understand my thought process, that why am I reacting? Forget government. Just generally, even at home, there's conflict. Mm. <clears throat> the reason for the conflict? If you look at it in any relationship, in any argument, in any issue, then what is happening? The dynamics is one person is saying, I am right, and the other person is saying, I am right. That's all it is. You're saying I am right, she's saying I am right. And that's the reason for the conflict. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. If you think about it really deeply, you will see in any argument, this is what is happening. So all it requires is that I have to see which is more important, that I am right, or do I value that relationship? If I value the relationship, then forget being right. You'll say, yes, okay, you are right. You're valuing the relationship. Another way to look at it is, here's the situation. It's in front of you. All day long, we go through many situations. It's in front of you. And then you have your thoughts. Our thoughts are here. 
So you have your thoughts and you have the situation. One is internal, the other is external. Which is more important? The one internal. Internal. But do we give importance to the internal? Or do we give ex importance to the external? The beauty of the external is the situation is going to come. But it's also going to go. What was yesterday's situation is not today's situation. Like yesterday, many people might have complained to you about traffic. But today, that situation wasn't there. Coming here was a breeze. It was, you know, no problem. Mm. But tomorrow, there'll be a different situation. And if I allow my thoughts to run on the basis of the situation, then who is the master? The situation or your thoughts? Situation. Oh, that is actually a very good point to make. Yeah. And so, Star, I'd also like us to touch on happiness mm -hmm. and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe, there are people out there who genuinely believe that they've never felt happiness. Mm -hmm. They're like, what is happiness? Mm -hmm. What does happiness feel like? Mm -hmm. Have I actually ever experienced this thing or been in this particular situation? Mm -hmm. And the honest truth is, we already know that life is always going to have its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you're fulfilled? When you say we don't know what happiness is, we do, because we can see the contrast. If we didn't know happiness, we wouldn't want it. We want it because we've tasted it, we've seen it, we've felt it. And happiness is something in which my senses are involved. For example, my eyes. When I watch a movie, it makes me happy. When I listen to music, my ears, it makes me happy. When I taste pizza, it makes me happy. So my five senses are engrossed. I am dependent on the Mercedes or the person or the food or the movie to give me happiness. And that is actually a lack of self mastery is when I am something will give me happiness. Actually, Real truth or real spirituality is understanding that I don't need something to give me happiness. I, the soul, am happiness. Happiness has to be something that is permanent. It has to be something which is intrinsic. I can't base my happiness on things around me. So what is permanent and what is intrinsic? Intrinsic means internal. So there's only two things in the world which no one can take away from you. Everything else can be taken away from you. Your position, your profession, your bank balance, your looks, your, um, your job, your role, your health, your health, everything can be taken away from us like that. You can be fired, you can become bankrupt. And so your happiness goes. So I need to find something that is not going to be taken away from me, that is always with me. And those two sentences are first sentence, I am a peaceful soul. I am a peaceful soul. Many people find this hard to uh, accept because they don't feel the peace. There's a reason for that. And if you want, we can go into that later. So one is, I am a peaceful soul. The second thing that can never be taken away from me is God is my father. That is my relationship with God. And at the end of the day, those two things cannot be taken away. Never. Before we wrap up real quick, we understand that all you said makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. but it starts with a journey of self-mastery. Mm -hmm. So if someone is watching and thinks, mm -hmm. I want to go on an emotional discovery journey, I want mm -hmm. to know myself, I want mm -hmm. to know my spirit, mm -hmm. what would be the first advice you'd give to them? What are the steps they need to take? Give quality time to yourself. Spend time in silence. Look at your thoughts, study your thoughts, because we can do three things with our thoughts. 
we can give ourselves a direction. What direction do I want my thoughts to go? I can discipline my thoughts. I need a destination. Otherwise, you'll see what do people say? Oh, my thoughts are all over the place. I'm all over the place. I can't control my thoughts because I don't have a destination. I've forgotten that I'm on a journey. I need to know the destination. So meditation is very important then. Call it meditation. Call it reflection. Call it what you like. Give time to yourself first thing in the morning. Start your day on the right tone, in the right mood. Because whatever happens within your first half hour, that is going to set your day. So if you wake up, um, you wake up late, uh, you spill your tea, you miss the bus, how will your day begin? How will it continue? Okay. Supposing you wake up and you just give time to yourself, then you know that your day is going to go well. Absolutely. And there's actually a book that I'd like to recommend to you, The Mastery of Self-Love. It's an amazing book and it speaks on all of this. And it's mm -hmm. so important to also get in touch with reading mm -hmm. about things like this, to actually incorporate it Spiritual into your lifestyle. Study, yes. But Sister Indu, for people who are interested in your mm -hmm. university, for people who are interested in finding out more mm -hmm. about their connection with their own spirituality, mm -hmm. how can they reach out to you? We have a center in Parkview in Ikoi, and we have a center in Ilupeju also. Both places, and they're open all day, every day. And I don't have the phone numbers right now with me, but they can but contact sure Google Brahma Kumaris. Brahma Kumaris, Nigeria. Yes, Brahma Kumaris. Then Kumari, you'll get the address and the phone number from there. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sister. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.